Someone wrote a review of this film and they mentioned out loud on Twitter that Dave Franco was wearing socks with his sandals. Bye, Al, what are those? <laughs> Hi, my name is Barry Jenkins. I'm the writer-director of If Bill Street Could Talk, and this is my scene breakdown. As far as eating goes, I was thinking, I was thinking we could put a table right here. Bill Street is a love story between two characters, Tish and Fani, and in the middle of the film, uh, Tish and Fani, like most young lovers, are trying to start a life together. They're looking for a loft, although there wasn't um, a Craigslist back in the day or West Side Rentals, and the landlord, played by Dave Franco, is basically giving them a tour of the place. And so Kiki Lane, who plays Tish here, is very disbelieving uh, that her man, Fani, can do what he says he will do, and so he goes, well, I'll show you. All right, all okay. right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, you ready? I'm ready, three, mm -hmm. two, one. Hey, I know it doesn't look like much right now, but um. Why did I choose Dave Franco? We were location scouting this building with the real landlord, and the guy came up the stairs, and he reminded me of Dave Franco. In the book, this character's written to be this very young uh, Jewish landlord, and so I thought, you know what? We we're gonna cast Dave Franco in this part because Dave Franco is Jewish. Did you tell the landlord that he looked like Dave Franco? Uh, I did not tell the landlord that he looked like Dave Franco. However, someone wrote a review of this film, and they mentioned out loud on Twitter that Dave Franco was wearing socks with his sandals, and this is because the landlord on the day he was wearing socks with his sandals, so. Bye, Al, what are those? <laughs> it's a work in progress. Yeah, see, Tish, it's, it's not done, it's a work in progress. And I remember reading the book, which is set in the early 1970s, disbelieving that a guy who's a short order cook could uh, look for a loft uh, in essentially Soho. Uh, but I did the research and there were all these lofts standing uh, empty all over the east side. And we found this building, I remember walking in and kind of uh, aligning myself with the characters where I thought, you cannot live here, this is impossible. There's chipped paint, there's rust, there's, you might need a tetanus shot if you go through this space. And then I, I clicked on something which was, what shows faith or love or romance more than someone promising you something that to your very eyes is impossible and you going, okay, I see it. Where are my mama and them gonna sit? Easy. Look, I put a couch right over here. In this moment, the camera uh, begins to go around the room. And what I love about this moment too is Fani sends the camera on its journey. And as we were location scouting, James Laxton, myself, and the cinematographer, we just started walking around the space. And I don't know, I kind of love it when uh, the experience of watching a film is as immersive for the audience as it is for the characters. And so I thought, yeah, we're gonna take our camera and we're going to literally go around at all these spaces. And so by the time the camera comes back to her, now she's all smiles. And so it was one of those moments where had we not location scouted, I don't think this thing with this swirling camera would have been in the film, you know? Where is the crew? Ah. <laughs> the sequence that just played right there, I'm gonna go back and uh, rewind it a little bit. So as this camera is panning around the room, part of the crew is behind the camera, just dancing all around, but most of the crew is right around that corner. If you hit that red door and make a right, everybody's tucked in and we're all holding our breath, just play, praying that the focus will hit and when he comes back around, Kiki's ready and Dave is not like looking at the camera, all these things, but uh, this was actually day two of production. The reason why we filmed this so early in production, buildings like this in New York are very rare these days and even this building was in the process of being flipped and being brought up to code. And so the only way the landlord would allow us to shoot is if we could get in and not alter his schedule of flipping the building. And I am not allowed to tell you the address of this building. Hey, Levy, come on, give me a, a hand with this fridge, man. I think sometimes uh, music can add, but it can also clutter. And there is a lot of music in the film, but there is no music in the scene. There used to be music in the scene, but now there is not. Tish and Fani are so clearly connected, and this thing we're doing with the camera is so potent, there was no need for it. I'm ready, you ready? I'm ready, three. And then we try to take it one step further, where Fani's like, okay, this is ridiculous. Now let's make it extra ridiculous. Uh, okay, uh, all right, you good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, okay. slow me now. Okay. Careful. All right, why am I straining more than you? <laughs> Tish's wardrobe, her hair, everything about her characterization in this film, it's a combination of a few things. One, it's a fidelity to the source material. Mr. Baldwin wrote this character. 
in just a very lush and loving way. When we cast Kiki Lane, I also was in love with the way she moved, you know, with the quality of her skin, the quality of her hair. And so when we have visions like this and these flash outs, I don't call them flashbacks because I think memory is very present. Those are an extension of her memory and she's remembering those things in a very elevated way. And so the light is a little bit different. The, the saturation of the color she's wearing is a little bit different. Uh, when we see her, these more elevated heightened moments that Tish wants to hold on to so badly. Well, thank you for my fridge, boys. But don't forget about my stove. It's a really simple scene, but I feel like when I think of my own personal relationships or the times where I've experienced extreme romance in my life, usually it's not like the big thing, somebody getting on their knees with like a, a diamond ring, you know, and, and giant stadium. What it really is, is these very small moments when your lover looks at you and smiles in a certain way um, and, and shows you that you should have faith in the love you guys are building, so. Do they kiss here? No, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching the scene breakdown. Check out the Bill Street Talk, uh, December 14th in theaters. Get your tickets on Fandango.